Okay, Nikki, we are live on Facebook and I'm so happy that you came and you took some time today. It's in English. Nikki, welcome to this interview. Hi, I'm happy to be here. I'm okay. very happy to see you as well. Yes, you came. And uh, today, um, Nikki, you are self-employed. You are in the middle of your heart's wish, I think. But the interesting thing always is, what have you done before in the past? How was your life then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't an easy journey, I would say, for me personally. So while I love what I'm doing today, um, I've had like quite an, uh, a road full of obstacles, I would say, over the years. I don't know how much you want me to, to tell <laughs> your audience about that. Whatever you, whatever you feel free to, to share from your, yeah. from your personal side, yes. Yeah. So when I was 16 years old, I got diagnosed with a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. So that was like really intense. And my life changed completely. At that moment, I did not know if I would survive and if I would even have a future. Mm -hmm. So that was like a really, really intense life circumstance that like made me realize how short life is. And I mm -hmm. think that is like a big part of um, my motivation behind like really chasing my dreams mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so after getting diagnosed with the brain tumor I had neurosurgery brain surgery mm. which lasted an entire day and um, I had to recover after which was really hard and it took seven years mm. eventually and the first few years were the hardest first few months were the hardest and the first few years were very hard as well like even watching tv was too intense like mm. I got sick from watching tv just to give you an idea of what my situation was like mm -hmm. um and I I I wasn't happy with life like which you can probably imagine because I was struggling so much but I came at a moment where I realized and where I felt like okay if I want like a better future if I want to change my life around I'm responsible Nobody else but me is responsible. And although it was really, really hard, I started like taking steps towards the life that I envisioned and really small steps. It's not like that I started my business and I went all in. No, it was like going for a two minute walk. It was that like intense, like the two minute walk was a huge step for me. And I built like from that basically to where I am now. Mm -hmm. that's that's very touching because uh 16 that's very young or my daughter my oldest daughter is 16 now today and so i can imagine that must be very hard to uh, um to live with that and with the, some of the consequences right but yeah. nikki what have you done when you what did you work something did you study something or what have you done at that time um before all the process of changing started or did you already aim um the the finishing line already before i got sick you mean or before i start, started my business uh before you started your business so mm -hmm. uh, most of um, us are very curious and would like to know so uh, what did you study what did you work what did you do um, <laughs> uh, and what kind of process uh, day by day did you have yeah yeah really good questions um yeah so when i recovered like my main drive was helping people Mm -hmm. And I wanted to become a doctor or a neurosurgeon, like to later realize that that's not possible because like my motor skills are not perfect anymore. Mm -hmm. But I, my main drive was that. So I wanted to study at university, but I was like a lot of levels below that. So I worked myself slowly up to be able to, to uh, study at university. So I did a doctor's assistant, doctor's assistant education then nursing school, then I studied psychology at university. And I thought like, once I studied psychology at university, mm -hmm. I will be so happy. Like that is like the thing, maybe even go to like study medicine, mm -hmm. but that was gonna be my roots. But then I was studying psychology and like, I'm really happy that I followed these steps, mm -hmm. that I followed, yeah, my heart wish, that I, that I followed my, my gut. But then I realized like, okay, I'm happy with this, this experience, the knowledge that I gained, but this is not like the final destination yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I was studying psychology, um, I started building my business. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. it was around like 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2018, it officially started with like a big launch. And yeah, that was the, the first moment that I had a success. Wow, that's amazing. So you studied um, psychology, you have been a student, uh, going to university, making a test. And how did you come with, up with the idea to start your own business? Was it something easy or I just do it, let's try? Or what did happen then? Mm. Ooh, um, I don't often think about that time anymore. Mm -hmm. What was a main drive for me is I was studying psychology. I realized that a surgeon was like out of the picture, becoming a surgeon was out of the picture because of my motor skills. It's like not possible. Mm -hmm. um, so then I was like, okay, am I going to be a psychologist for the rest of my life, work in a hospital from nine to six, like be indoors all day? Mm -hmm. Or do I change my life and go for something absolutely crazy where I can basically, um, yeah, create my dream life so for example what i really like is to travel and to explore mm -hmm. and to meet a lot of new people and to have freedom like time and location freedom mm -hmm. and i felt that inside that i'm an entrepreneur but before that like i knew somehow but i was scared to take action on it i did try like a few things but like really taking action was not the case mm -hmm. But at that time, I just like took the step and I went all in and it was not that at that moment I knew exactly what I was going to do, but I was doing research. I was like exploring all different directions. And I remember that I was in a Facebook group for entrepreneurs. It was like a general Facebook group mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs. And I met someone mm -hmm. in that group that was doing something similar to what I'm doing now. And he told me about it. And then this crazy impulse of idea came from him um he's from the states i'm from the netherlands and he was about to go uh to go speak at an event about online business mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he told me about that and he said why don't you join me mm -hmm. and i was like well i know that's like such a crazy idea just book a ticket and fly to the states but then i was like okay i only live once <laughs> mm -hmm. this might like change my world completely and I'm just going to do it. So then I flew over to the States mm -hmm. and I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot. And then after that, I had my first launch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's exciting. So um, could you, as you get excited with the business, then the business opportunity come, you could fly to the States, right? Uh, could you finish your, your studies then? Um, because full of excitement and business, the first launching. So what happened with your studies? Yeah, good question. Also, because like I was still recovering from my brain tumor. It was years after, but like still today I'm struggling with energy. So it was a lot like my psychology studies, my building my business. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, from my university, they had like an entrepreneurship program where I got accepted. And because of that, I had like a lot of flexibility when it came to, to yeah, my education to become a psychologist. So I could like spread it all, all out in my weekly schedule. I could take breaks. I was even able to travel during my studies. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, that was amazing. And then I came at a moment where my business like really took off and it was a scary decision, but I took the decision to stop the studies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for psychology and go all in with, uh, yeah. It's wow like, so so you, you, that was a big step for you right to go all in businesses flying up and yeah. stop your, your your studies then yeah yeah because it's not like the normal route right everyone is just like okay you go to university you have a job <laughs> and that is like life and i was like okay i'm building a business here i'm flying all over the world everything is online mm -hmm. i'm taking this huge leap scary leap like it was scary for me yeah yeah what what was most scary for you mm. taking the risk like entering the unknown mm -hmm. yeah yeah not knowing how it would like end what results that i, I would get mm -hmm. maybe regretting my decision mm -hmm. 
Okay, because that's that's uh, mostly very important and interesting for all of us because everybody's standing in front of some decisions, right? And then we're wondering, can we do it? Can we not do it? Shall we do it? Shall we not do it? So probably we went through pro and contrast, um, uh, but you finally made a decision, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, did you regret that decision? No, not at all. No. No. <laughs> Even the decisions that I made along that path that otherwise I maybe should not have made like i'm happy i made them because they shaped my life to where i am now mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so i'm happy with all the decisions that i made very very nice so i can imagine that many people are very curious now and to say hey nikki what are you doing today so what what went your path to today right yeah yeah so basically when i started my online business i developed um digital knowledge products like digital products mm -hmm. that were about instagram and getting brand deals like getting uh, collaborations with brands then i shifted to do, doing social media management for coaches and course creators so i was on their accounts like helping them market their services and get clients i got insane results doing that so i documented that process and basically what i'm doing now is that I help coaches and course creators set up their business and get clients doing what they love, basically. So I help them build a business around what they love. Mm. Yeah, That's very nice because then you do what you love and you empower people yeah. to do what they love. Yeah. This yeah. is amazing. So this is very amazing. Yeah. And um, as, as people can see on your Facebook side, uh, you are traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. You're enjoying life. <laughs> yeah. And you're enjoying helping people, right? Yeah, yeah. Helping people, traveling, and like strategy. These are like <laughs> the three things <laughs> that I really yes. love. Yeah. You're very, very strong. That's your gift, right? What you what you got from. Huh? Yeah. That's very nice. And um, so when when uh, people are listening to our interview today, and they maybe I don't know in which phase uh, uh, they stand, which time, you know, if they stand at the first one where they're still uh going some path of their life maybe they are in this decision kind of thing shall i do it shall i not do it uh what would what is your um advice for people on the way what would you tell them if you could just see them and tell them from your heart what's what's your message to them mm, i think it's two things like what i mentioned before like just make decisions just take steps because it shapes your life to how you want it to be. Maybe not like directly, but you are moving at least. <laughs> so for me, I don't regret any of the decisions and the steps that I took. So that's the first. And the second is listen to your intuition. Like mm -hmm. don't overthink, listen to your intuition. Mm -hmm. Like everything that I've uh, accomplished now has been because of listening to my heart, listening to my intuition. Mm -hmm. even though some decisions like might might seem scary big uncomfortable like if i feel that i need to do something yeah i need to do it because it will bring me further <laughs> yeah. so if i understand you right there is some fear sometimes right but mm -hmm. through the decision you go through the fear yeah. that what i understood yeah. right? oh yeah. that's amazing yeah taking the uncomfortable steps yeah it mm -hmm. is like it kind of feels maybe not good because of fear to take the step but i feel like in in my my heart my gut my intuition that it is the right move for me so that i i do then i do it anyway mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and consist consistent steps like that i feel bring us further yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's very powerful and that's a big encouragement for everyone who, who says, hey, the steps I have done already is it has its purpose, right? It's I'm not at the aim at the moment, but it has already a purpose. And I think that's very encouraging for people listening to this uh, interview, because we are all on the way, right? We are on the way to go for, to a name if we have a name. Um, yeah. And so that's that's I think that's an amazing to listen to your story what happened in your life uh dealing with um sickness dealing with the consequences going your path fighting for it and then making a turnaround and going more even direct to your heart right yeah 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 it's been an amazing journey yeah and even like these first steps that i took 
like I didn't get an immediate result. Like it was like really hard, but knowing that I was like moving, that I was taking these steps toward like the eventual goal, the big goal mm -hmm. that already made me, yeah, mm -hmm. happier mm -hmm. person. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So that's so exciting. And I think if people have listened to our interview today, uh, they can search you on online and they come in contact with you and uh, might, there might be some spots for training. And I think they will be very happy with you listening and be educated and learn more um, from your part, from your gifts, what you are putting into this world. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Nikki, for the time we could have for this uh, powerful interview with you. I'm really, really happy and I wish you all the best. I'm looking forward to see you soon again. Thank you, Chris. I love being here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much.